Hi, I'm Dr. Mike. I'm Crystal. I'm Ryan. And this is NF Geeks. All right, you guys, thank you for coming on uh, once again. So this one, we did the last one about philosophy so we could do this one because this is going to be a great one. We just talked about this today, and that is Marxism. Mm -hmm. That was and the build-up. Yeah, that was actually yeah. the build-up to Marxism. So, because uh, I forgot to say this, there's always something I forget. Marxism and communism is an idealism. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the <laughs> it's ideal, ideal society. Form. Right, it's an ideal form. And communism is this ideal state. It's an eschatological state. You arrive at the perfect state. Yeah. You know, which is communism. So, all right, so let's get it started. Let's get started. So, um, you know, the, the, so we talked about it and today and exchange value and all that stuff. And capitalist position would be that um, this is a negative interpretation of capitalism because Marxism is really a critique of capitalism. It is a negative interpretation and this system allows for mobility as it is because you can always, because you can always exchange more, exchange more, yeah. have a higher exchange value and rise to a better thing. It's not, no one's locked into anything in that you can, um, there's enough diversity in the market to bounce around and move up. So um, how would you argue that? Do you think that's true or do you think that's false? I think it's false, honestly, because your diversity is you're diverse, but look, it's the perception that hard work will get you somewhere, but in reality, it really doesn't. You need luck, luck, good start, a good starting point, luck, and, and ingenuity. You have to have a talent, like, and you have to have something, you have to be able to exploit others, too. You have the ability to, and the lack of morality to exploit others. You know, justify what you're doing. All right, so basically what you're saying is, is that... Um, capitalism, in order to continue, in order to exist, even to move up, you have to you have to abandon morality. Yes, and you have to, to exploit. And you have to exploit someone else. Yes. Okay, Brian, any thoughts? Do you agree? Well, yeah, because if you're trying to better oneself, then you shouldn't be able to show as much sympathy to others or to take other things for yourself. Okay. Um, all right, uh, so let me argue the other side, which is that, okay, um, what's so bad about that? Um, you could still have, maybe the values are, are good values to do that because it makes you stronger, smarter, competition forces you to be better and to grow and to, you know, just exist on a better level through the competition of, of exchange and all that. And that isn't that better than a stagnation that might come from a socialist or communist state. I don't think it would, it would stagnate you, though. It would give you an opportunity to pursue something you actually do love instead of pursuing something that makes you more money. If I really love teaching and I want to teach little kids, it's a low-paying job. It's not a good-paying job. And in a communist society, it would be more easier to get that job and be able to support yourself. In a capitalist society, it's thought of as a lesser job. I am more important because I run a company than you because you're a teacher. But who teaches the children that become the adults who run the company, the teachers, and they're usually stepped down on. Like, I think it's amazing, like North, we knock North Korea all the time, but they have the highest paid teachers globally. Globally, they treasure, I mean, it's not indoctrination, obviously, but they treasure teachers. And we pay teachers like pittance for what the stuff they deal with. And we all know, like, in, it's just like the people that influence kids and raise them Help you know help teach them are treated like scum, while the CEOs and bankers can are treated like gods. It's just not real. It's not reality, because they're the bankers. Make they just push money around. They just direct. They just allocate money. They're not doing the real work. Mm. That's actually what Marx said, actually about the bourgeoisie. All right, but I have to point out though, out of all the examples you could have chose, you chose North Korea. I know that's not that's not a good example, but it's just it's something that I noticed about them like. I mean, they do great parades, too. They do awesome parades, just like the Russians do the parades. They, I think they're nuclear, better. Nuclear missiles, walking down the street. We all want to see that. Come on. I, At least they're in step. Our military sucks when they're in step. If you ever watch a video of our military, they're like 90% of the time on a step, and you're like, oh, God, please, you're disgracing the U.S. Huh. All right. Ryan, do you have any thoughts? Um, not directly, but just on the idea of humans. Uh, um, we went over this one. Yeah, yes, yes, the, the state of nature. Yeah, right. Um, so the state of nature. In my opinion, we want to better ourselves. So depending on which side, I depending on which side betters yourself to 
time, I believe, is the side that I think would be better for everyone so they can deal with themselves individually. Like, I, I'm, I'm responsible for myself, so I'm just going to deal with myself, yeah. especially when someone's self-centered. Because everyone's self-centered, it's just a matter of what to what degree, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, narcissist. Right. Um, so if everyone were to work with themselves upon doing this, I think that might actually be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how, could, how would you justify, then, um, the state, you know, the, the, in a socialist society, and certainly in a communist society, the state controls much of the economy and much of businesses, and a lot of personal freedom is limited. Um, uh, whereas you would have those freedoms here in a, in a capitalist society. Well, let's take, you know, people talk about socialized medicine, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the American argument, the capitalist argument, is that in spite of the, the money situation regarding medicine actually makes the technology and the medicine itself better, and that, um, and that you have you, more choices, that you don't have to, like, be wait to assign a dentist or fill out a form or anything like that. You want to go to a dentist, you just go to the dentist. You want to go to the doctor, you just go to the doctor. You want to go to the emergency room, you just walk in. Even, even with private insurance, you still have to have, they have a list of doctors. If there's your doctor, that doctor is not covered by that plan, you can't have them. Sure. You pay out of pocket for it. In like places like Canada, where they have universal health care, you can go to any doctor. People shouldn't have to go bankrupt just for basic medicine. I mean, I went to the hospital for her gallstone. No medical treatment. They just x-rayed me and ultrasounded me. My bill was over $1,500. That's expensive. And it's like, and what happens is if you have socialized, like, socialized medicine, more people can seek treatment. It also, like, it just takes the burden off the panic of, you know, is this illness going to knock me into bankruptcy? Am I going to lose everything because I get sick? With, like, socialized medicine, you don't really have that risk. And you can't say necessarily that they're worse than us because we, even in this country with privatized medicine, we still have a long wait time. In states that have privatized medicine and states that have socialist medicine, you still have a long wait time. Like Massachusetts has socialist me medicine in this state. And we don't have that bad wait times compared to Pennsylvania, but we have the highest doctors per capita. Like we have more doctors, like we have more doctors like for one per, like the population. Like, I think it's like the largest like, ratio. Yeah, we have the largest ratio. Like we have the best. Like we have more doctors. Like instead of being in like three hundred people to a doctor, it's like fifty people to a doctor. I mean, I'm, 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 the numbers are not right. actually that. But I'm like, like, but that's it. Instead of having so many people on one doctor, we have it more diverse. Doctors are actually getting paid now here, and like other countries. And like the reason why healthcare costs keep rising is because people go to the ER because they can't refuse you in the ER, and they the bill. Boost it up. People go to the ER. They can't force you to pay. They write the debt off. The the debt goes falls on the private insurers. Falls on the people who actually pay for their insurance. Okay. What about the uh, Brian? You want anything you want to say about it? I'm not sure which side I'm arguing when I say this. I think it might be communism. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever one you want to argue side. You, but you have that option. Okay. Um, if you make one number and like this is your number, um, for example, like we're talking about like minimum wage, how it's like a set number then you know it won't fluctuate and go up or down, so you won't be in a, either, you won't be in a depression, but chances are you might not be in a recession. Yeah. Um, but at least you know what you're going to be paying. Um, and if you're gonna be paid. Right, whereas if on the other side, say like if we were to make our own goods and sell them under capitalism, we can set our own prices, I assume. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, maybe we would get greedy and set them too high, someone else wouldn't want to buy them, or something like that. That. So it it's too undependable. It's also and also the risk of human life, like the human cost. The people who need health insurance are the ones who are working forty hours a week. They're trying to survive. They're trying to support themselves, and they can't do it because their company's denying them. All right. Um, capitalism would argue that that's um, you know that's because they're working for a bad business and they're working um, too hard at a job that's not worth the exchange value, and that they should work harder at another job and. and opportunities that's, that exist. That's based on the assumption that there's other jobs. There's not always other jobs. The market tanked. The market pre-fell. Like, I remember watching the stock market go, it's going down. And I was like, I watched it. I was like, oh my god, are we going to go into another depression? Is this gonna, is this 1929 again? Are we going to watch the stock market completely fall and then ruin everything? And also, you got to think of it this way. 
people are healthier now that we have a little bit of socialized medicine. We don't have it as high, but we have more socialized medicine. People are healthier. But now that we have food stamps, there, there are no longer people starving on the street. You know, it helps. I mean, private charity would help. It would, but it's struggling now with the social programs. How is it going to handle the extra caseload? And that's how I think of it, is if you can't, like, and I always believe this, if a society is judged by how they treat the weakest. How you treat the weakest link is how you are judged. And it's the military line, you are only as strong as your weakest link. True enough. What about, um, what are you guys feeling about uh, alienated labor? The idea that you're separated from your work um, in terms of its actual use value because you're blinded by exchange value. What are your thoughts about that? Because we talked about that. Yeah. I believe it's like it's purpose. It's like how do we put this as alien neighbor? The alien, like the alienation um, is the cave. Like you're alienated, so they can project an image, and you won't discuss to anybody around you what the projection is. So you can't come up. They won't. Let, they don't want you to collectivize. They don't want you to think as a team because they don't want thinkers. They want people who do and follow mindlessly. They want them. It is good for business, but it's my, they want mindless servants. They don't want somebody who can challenge it because challenging pe people who challenge it will make others question. And they usually have to be like the dissenters in North Korea, for instance. They're locked in a concentration camp because they don't want people challenging the government. They do not want riots. They don't want rebellions. They don't want that. So it's, it's done that to prevent people from collectivizing and thinking, you know what? This is bad for all of us, not just some of us. And like, what they also do is they like to turn people against each other. This person, like the welfare queen, the mythological welfare queen. It's just, if somebody's doing that, if you see somebody living a high life, you should probably report them because they can't be considered a fraud. But like, people will demonize people who are food stamps and welfare because somebody is actually like, Exploiting it. Somebody's doing what the freaking capitalists do at the top. Exploiting the system. People get mad at the, everybody else. But the truth is, you know, people without, like, food stamps and stuff like that, people will starve on the street. And people will be desperate. I said it before. I have no problems killing somebody to get to get my food. And it's not, wow. it's there not you ruthlessness. Go. No, don't worry, <laughs> Ryan. Come back. It's just, it's, people are I'll desperate. kill anybody during the Christmas season. But, like, look at the... Look at Victorian era society. No social programs. People were working to death. People were robbing. They were taught to, kids were taught to steal and pickpocket because they get away with it. They're kids. And it got to the point of people that desperate. Do you really want a country that's that desperate? Do you want France? France, you know, pre revolution, the richest are getting richer, spending money extravagantly, borrowing lots of money, spending extravagantly, while the people are stuck to eating grass because they can't no food because the, er the aristocracy was given ownership of the common lands. And what happened? They rebelled. And even when Napoleon took over, like, look at Germany. Germany pre-World War II, pre-Nazism. People were starving. It led to a tyranny. And like Napoleon, like Napoleon made, like Napoleon did what for France, what Germ Nazi uh, Hitler did for Germany. He lifted them up. He gave them more, I mean, he did conquer Poland and imprisoned a bunch of Jews. Okay. And, and kill them. And kill them, of course. But like, during the time in Germany, he was a savior. People were that desperate that they were starving and they had the, they would burn the marks because they didn't have money. The money was worth less than paper. The paper it was printed on. What, um, all right, so let's, we have time for one more thing. How are you participating in capitalist society though? How are you working against, um, what are ways that you're working against these ideas? Like, what do you, what, you know what I mean? Like, how are you I can understand, participating? Like, I can understand consumerism. I can understand the urges. And it's like, honest to God, if you ever go to a store, they're designed for impulse buyers. And I have, I'm impulsive. Sure. So I understand. Right, you're a perceiver, of course. I'm impulsive. I understand that, like, you know, I want that. That looks like it's a good thing. I want it. It's, everybody goes through it. It's just coming to a point where you have to realize that, what, well, what do you really need it? It's like, I had a hoarding problem, and I wouldn't let go of anything. And it got to a point where I would look at stuff and go, do I need it or not? If I didn't need it, it's gone. I had to do it that moment. I couldn't, like, well, if I thought about it, I'd, try, I'd convince myself and justify myself and keep it in there. And that's the problem. Like, people were, like, somebody was stabbed on Black Friday. 
card stems from Black Friday. Like, people, Walmart workers were forced oh. to go to work on freaking Thanksgiving. All right, but what have you done, other than impulse buying, how do you support capitalism? How do you keep it going? I think it's honestly got supported, like, you know, Walmart has, like, when I worked at Walmart, I would, I would want to be, like, I love, I love being a union member. Like, people denounce it all the time, and I'm always arguing against it. Like, I'm always arguing for unions because I know what the only benefits they have. Because, man, I got, I, when I was a union worker, I had a lot of good benefits for being unionized because you're protected. But, like, you can support, like, I support capitalism in essence of buying. Like, I try not to go to Walmart because I try to keep it as local as possible. And I try not to go to Walmart. But there's times where it comes to price versus some, like, ideals. Money, like, if I can live, if I can afford it. Or is it really worth money? Is that really worth my wages? But that's why I buy used a lot and try to keep everything. I try to help small businesses and everything. I don't want to support. I know I'm a consumer. I know all about consumerism. I know all about that. It's just understanding that you, that your weakness. That's it. Understanding your weakness. And I understand that I have a weakness for like coffee. <laughs> no, and I don't, support don't whole we drinks, all. Yeah. And I like. But that's a good. I actually say, uh, sometimes I've said in classes that I, I don't drink Starbucks, that's the bourgeoisie yeah. coffee. I drink Dunkin' Donuts, which is coffee of the people, yeah. coffee of the working class. Although that's ridiculous. They're, 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 they're both the same. They're both, right. both from Walmart. It's fine. Right. Brian, how do you support capitalism? What ways do you support it and like, sort of give in to everything? <laughs> um, I just wanted to say one of the things I believe you said was a capitalistic point of view before that like if you can't if, if you're unhappy in this job go get like another job yeah that would be the position that you could always exchange around and go up and there's freedom to do that would from Mark's point of view say yeah but you still gotta be like in the low part of the totem pole of whatever job you're going to just unless you're trying to actually like overthrow it yes he would say that it's mostly a lateral move yeah at right. best so it's really. horizontal yeah, right. right. You're not necessarily, and if you go up, you only go up a little. Right. Not enough that's really significant. Yeah. Um, so, how do I? How do you participate in? Well, let me put it this way: What is your? What is the thing that you use? Yeah. What is the thing that you support capitalism because you always pay for it and you always want it and you always buy it? Because you just love it, even though it's not that big a deal, but you're still supporting capitalism. For example, I'll give you mine. Mine is Chinese food. I buy Chinese food very regularly, okay, at least once a week, because I love it. It's my happy food. So, I, now granted, a part of me thinks, well, it's a Chinese family. It's like cousins and uncles, and, you know, it's like 10 Chinese. You know, I'm supporting the family. But no, I'm supporting capitalism. It's a much larger internet. thing, absolutely. You know, and I keep supporting capitalism. But you also know the thing is different. Supporting the internet, pay for Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's right. There you go. That's a good one. Or come to BCC and just take it. Either yeah, but you can't have it uh, forever here. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to can't have it the comfort of home. You got to pay for it at home, and then all the games. Think of all the video games like and everything. Also, I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm not exactly anti-capitalism. I'm anti-corporatism. All right. How can you have capitalism without corporations, though? Because small businesses. We had capitalism. With okay, small but how is a small business going to run like a railroad and airline? You can't have a small business airline. Who runs the airlines? Who controls most of the airports? The American government. Okay, but still. The TSA. You know, all right, but the carriers. Are, but I mean, you know. How you can't have a mom and pop. Yeah, you, you can, can't you have, can have a, mom a smaller, pop. but you can have a smaller like. You don't have to have a, a super corporation. You can have a smaller like Costco. I mean, look at Costco compared to Walmart. All right, but what about the, but what about very big things like Boeing? You can't have mom and pop airline. You know, people building turbo engines. You need something huge to produce yeah, a jet. Like, like I understand that, but you can also have like you also have General Motors and whatever kind of, but. It's like, I understand having that, but like, the globalization is a big issue. Like, if you have a company and you're so keen on just taking over, the monopolization, that's the word. Monopolization. You take out every company, every small business in the area because they can't sustain competing against you because you pay your employees crap. And you, it's all about, you know, utility. So for Walmart took over what, Ann and Hope or something like that? Yeah. They, yeah. crushed, they crushed the businesses. I remember Ann and Hope and Ames. I do remember Ann and Hope. And Edgar's. Nobody remembers Edgar's. And Bradley's. That's what I'm from Bradley. All right, you guys. Thank you so much uh, for being on. Um,
don't forget everyone to uh, join the Facebook forum uh, for NF Geeks. Uh, follow NF Geeks on Twitter and Tumblr. And uh, new NF Geeks videos every uh, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. So, um, guys, thank you very much. And what do we say? It's, it's happening. Happen it's happening. It's happening. That's right. Although that's a capitalistic slogan, right? Forever happening. <laughs> that's right. But we want it to happen for the people. For the people. Yes. <laughs>